Hi guys, I'm Amy and for anyone that is new around here, my channel is dedicated to all things art related. In today's video, I am going to be talking through how I drew an elephant in charcoal pencils. So if this is something that interests you, then carry on watching. Firstly, let's run through those all important materials. For this drawing, I am using the De La Rowney hot pressed watercolour paper at £140 or 300 GSM, and I'm using various paintbrushes. So these are all by De La Rowney in the size 4, 7, 20, and 26. I'm also using the Tombow Mono Eraser and the Kneaded Eraser for pulling up those highlights. And I'm using a hard charcoal block and a light and medium colour charcoal pencil plus two sharpeners. So I'm using the Twin Manual Sharpener by Derwent and the Superpoint Manual Sharpener by Derwent as well. So I have listed all of those materials in the description. So if you'd like to take a look, don't forget to check out that description for all the info you need. Charcoal is a very new medium to me, so I first tried charcoal several years ago and I'm not going to lie but I was really put off by it and I wasn't much of a fan, but I decided to take the plunge and give charcoal another go. So it's been a little bit of a learning experience so definitely bear with me. I also found some old charcoal pencils out of my cupboard so I don't think that they're the best make to use, but I still think this drawing turned out okay so here goes nothing. As a first step, I am using the charcoal block and what I have done is actually wrap that charcoal block in some tissue paper. So charcoal is known for being incredibly messy, so to avoid getting my hands and paper dirty, I just wrapped it in tissue paper and I can just be a little bit more careful and have that control with the shading and just not get my hands too dirty. So I've started with the background because there's just so much going on with the sky and all the foreground. So using that charcoal block, I first start to get in all of that really dark shading and value in the sky. I'm being really careful not to get any value onto the elephant because it's really important that the elephant stands further forward than the background. So if I start adding too much value to the elephant, then what is going to happen is the elephant will just merge into that background. So the general rule I have with charcoal is that unless an area is really, really dark, almost completely black, then I leave those areas completely free of charcoal. So for now, I'm working around the elephant and I'm also just making sure that I leave a lot of white space in the sky too. So what I am doing is using the charcoal block in two different ways. So when I'm trying to be careful, like go around the elephant, I just hold the charcoal block at a vertical or perpendicular angle and that is just to make sure that I have more control over where that charcoal is going. So for the larger areas, so such as the sky, I then use the side of that charcoal block and what this does is just allow me to create an even and quick distribution of shading. So it just covers a large surface area very quickly. I'm also making sure that I really pay attention to that reference photo. And when I look at the reference photo, like for the sky, I'm just looking at the perspective of the sky and also the texture and detailing in the foreground. So I know exactly how to recreate that in the drawing. So the sky comes inwards towards the elephant. So what I have done is just make sure that I create that perspective with the charcoal block so that it looks like it's coming in towards the elephant. Then for the sea line and the horizon, I just create that crisp and sharp line by using the edge of the charcoal block and I just make sure again to leave some areas white where there is that rip in the tide. So I leave those areas white because once your charcoal is down, it is so hard to preserve highlights. So if there are any highlights that you want to preserve, it's really important that you leave those areas free of charcoal just to make it a lot easier to pull up those highlights with the Tombow Mono Eraser or the Kneaded Eraser. So now for the sand. So for the sand, there is so much texture. So there's almost like this graininess to the sand. So what I am doing is I'm using the side of the charcoal block and I'm really just gently sweeping that over the surface area of the paper. So I'm barely touching the paper when I do this. So what this is doing is it's creating that sandy texture because I'm just glazing the charcoal over the paper. So that charcoal isn't getting into all the little creases 
and the grooves of the paper. Then I am using the light charcoal pencil and I'm just adding a little bit more shading into some of the areas that are more shadowed and darker. So again I'm using the side of the pencil and I'm just creating a light dusting of the charcoal pencil to just ever so slightly increase the dark values and shadows in the sand but also still maintain that really grainy and sandy feel. Again, I'm also just making sure that I create that perspective by looking at the direction of the shadows and the texture in the sand. So I just look at what sort of shapes or patterns are in the sand and I go in the same direction just to create that definition and distinct perspective. Now for the elephant, I switch to using both the light and darker shades of the charcoal pencil. So I don't want to use the charcoal block because it's too big. So what I do is I use the charcoal pencils because they are smaller and just better for getting in those little details. What I'm doing here is just really paying attention to all of the light and dark areas in the reference photo and I'm just gently shading out and sketching in all of the dark areas on the elephant. So I'm just looking at where all of the shading is on the reference photo. So for example with the ears, anywhere that is really dark or shaded I just shade in some of that charcoal pencil value down and I just keep it light because I really want to be able to blend the charcoal out with the paint brushes. I also create those shadows on top of the elephant's head, the face, the eyes and the body but what I also like to do is just get in some of those wrinkles and lines on the elephant and the reason why I do this is to just make sure that they aren't lost when it comes to the blending. So now it is time to blend all of that charcoal out and first of all I will start with the sky. So what I'm doing is just using my fingers initially just to blend because what I want to do is apply quite a lot of pressure to the paper. So sometimes the paint brushes can be a bit soft so doing this just helps to blend but keep that darkness and value. So I have of course made sure that my fingers are clean and this is because your fingers contain a lot of oil so what you want to do is make sure that your hands are nice and clean so that you don't accidentally transfer any oils onto the paper and just create any smear lines. Now what I'm doing is working on all of those areas in the sky that I kept white and what I'm doing is just using a lot of the charcoal powder and residue to add value into the sky. So it's really important to add value to all the other areas as well because if you don't it's not going to look realistic because there won't be any depth and dimension in your piece. So what I start to do is use a paintbrush and I pick up some of that loose charcoal powder and I just start to buff that powder into the surrounding areas. So if I need an area to go a bit darker then I'll use the charcoal block or pencils and I'll just shade in some value directly onto the paper and then just blend with the paintbrush. The paintbrush is light and fluffy so it's great for creating that really soft and subtle transition between values but to create a bit more of a harder blending of tone I'll either use my fingers or I'll wrap my finger in a bit of tissue paper and just blend. I also use a lot of circular motions for blending so I don't just use back and forth motions and the main reason why I don't do this is because it will create stop and start lines whereas circles don't have a stop or start point so it's just so much easier for blending. I will take the paintbrush and start working on an area and very quickly just use circular motions to blend that area out. So if there were any real stubborn lines then what I do is I actually go in the opposite direction to the pencil and that just really helps to alleviate any harsh lines. Now just a quick little pointer that I forgot to mention earlier on, it's also really important to be careful if you are using a charcoal block because if you aren't careful then it can be really easy just to scratch your paper so just a tip to avoid this is just to keep all of your shading light and avoid too much hard pressure. So now we are working on the elephant and what I've done is now switch from a large paintbrush for the blending to a really small paintbrush. So this paintbrush is a really small detailed brush and it's a size 4 and what I'm doing now is just blending out all of the charcoal in the elephant. So I'm just really just following the same techniques I used for the sky and the foreground. So what I'm doing is just gently shading all of the charcoal out into the white space to create that tonality in the elephant 
than the shadows, values and contrast. I'm also using a smaller hard charcoal block and I'm shading in some darker values onto the elephant as well and I'm also picking up some charcoal residue just to really intensify all of the shadows. It's so important to make sure that you really do get in enough value so I had some trouble because I'm using cheaper products but I did spend a bit of time off camera really building on those values to increase the darkness in the elephant and in all the background as well. So now that I have increased all of the darkness and tone in the piece, it's time to go in with the kneaded eraser and the Tombow Mono Eraser and just really transform this piece. So firstly, the sky. I'm using the kneaded eraser for the sky because it's a larger section and the kneaded eraser is just great for pulling up some larger highlights. It's a great eraser to use for charcoal because it just lifts up that charcoal and also the kneaded eraser can just be moulded into whatever shape you want so it's also great for those little details too. I'm using two different techniques with the kneaded eraser. Firstly what I'm doing is I'm just going into those light areas in the sky and I'm just sweeping in one direction just to lift up some of that charcoal and that just creates those stunning beams of light in the sky. I'm also dabbing the kneaded eraser as well and the reason why I'm dabbing the kneaded eraser is because it just creates that fluffy cloud texture so for the clouds nearer the horizon it just creates that cotton ball effect for the clouds. I'm also using the same technique for the sand so I'm sort of dabbing the kneaded eraser over the sand and what this does is it just lifts up little specks of the charcoal rather than really sharp lines or edges and this technique just helps to really keep that sandy and grainy feel. I will also be using the Tombow Mono Eraser for the sand and just pressing down onto the eraser just to create some really small specks and they just look like little specks of sand so again it just helps to create all that texture in the sand rather than it just being really soft or smooth. So what I do is I just keep going back over all of the areas as much as I need to until I feel that I have created enough highlights and there is enough contrast in value. So remember value is one of the most important things to consider in charcoal drawings. Then I work on the elephant and I'm now switching to the Tombow Mono Eraser. I absolutely love using the Tombow Mono Eraser for pulling up highlights and it's a great eraser to use for charcoal drawings, graphite and coloured pencil drawings. It's great for pulling up those little fine highlights because it's so small and what I am doing is just pulling up all the highlights and details in the elephant so I just start with the eye and I pull up some highlights above the eye on top of the cheekbone and then I just start to make my way up to the head and just pulling up some highlights there as well and the ear and also the body. I'm very precise with creating all of those highlights and I just pull up highlights where I can see all of the light sources. So the highlights are so important in charcoal drawings. Like I said, you really need to make sure that your values and your contrast is just on point. So you really need both those really dark and intense shadows, but then the highlights as well to create that contrast. So the highlights just gives everything that lift and already you can just see how much is bringing the elephant to life and just how much the elephant stands forward now. I will also be toning down some of these highlights a little bit just to make sure that they don't look too harsh and to do that I just like to take a paintbrush and sweep over some of that loose charcoal powder just to tone them down. And I think that is just about it for this tutorial. Before I sign off, the full tutorial for this is available over on my Patreon. So if you'd like to check that out, I have left a link in the description box down below. I really do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you are new around here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss an update from me. I upload art content every single week, so I hope you will stick around and join in on the fun. Let me know in the comment section below what you liked the most in this tutorial and what you would like to see in a future video. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!